Grace and peace to you all. Oh, this is Pastor Pimpong. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the fifth day of the third month of the new year 2020. By the grace of God, I am well and I'm alive and you are also well and you are alive on this my early morning walk with Jesus Christ. The Lord has been so good to me, and I believe he has been so good to you also. Okay, beloved, let us offer unto God pure praise, pure honor, pure adoration, pure thanks, for he's been so good to you and I. The Lord has been so good. I'm trying to free my hand. Amen. Listen, the temperature here today is 54 degrees Fahrenheit and about 12 degrees celsius that's how the temperature is today and god has been so good graciously blessed me with the strength to walk but today i want to share with us a word from the word from god's word in the book of jeremiah i had indicated the last uh, sermon that i sent that i'm going to give a series Jeremiah's encounters with false prophets, stubborn kings, and deceptive counselors. You know, just as today we have false prophets amongst us. But to set the background, let me share with us. Hebrews chapter 1 tells us that God who in times past spoke to us by the prophets, today speaks, has spoken to us by his son. Okay, now... Do we still have prophecies, word of prophet, people prophesying today? Yes, you know, but the prophecies of today have to line up with the word of God, have to line up with G what Jesus Christ has said. He's not going to give us something, any extraordinary that is far out of the word of God. He won't do that. So then who are the prophets of today? Well, we are talking about people who speak God's word in truth who will preach the word of God, the truth, true word of God, without embellishing it, like the prophets of old, who only want the favor of the people. And so they will tell them what they want to hear. And having said that, let us go into the word of God. Let us go into the word of God today. Um, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 36, Jeremiah 36, 37, 38, 39, and I want to encourage you to read that uh, those chapters of that book you know in Jeremiah chapter 36 the Bible tells us the Lord says in Jeremiah the Lord told Jeremiah to get a road a roof of a book and write in that row the words that God wants is the, the words of God's judgment that is bringing up upon Judah and that's exactly what Jeremiah did Jeremiah took the roll of book and then he called Baruch, the son of Nereah, and spoke as he heard from God. That is what he spoke to the people. And so, and so Baruch wrote those words. Baruch wrote those words. He wrote them in the book and it was taken to. Uh, and the Lord told Jeremiah has to read it in the ears of the people on the day of fasting when they gather in the synagogue, you know, in the temple. And that's exactly what Jeremiah did. So Baruch wrote the word and he sent it to the people as they had gathered uh, on the day of fasting. And it was read into their ears and also read into the ears of all the people in the city. And after he had done that, the same was taken to the leaders the counselors, Zedekiah, the son of Hananiah, and a host of others, you know, Shemaiah, Shephatiah, all of them. So when they heard the word, the Bible says that they were terrified what they heard in the word. So they told Jeremiah and Baruch to go and hide and that they were going to deliver the message to the king because they knew what the king was capable of doing. So they were going, I mean, Jeremiah and Baruch had to go and hide themselves 
Uh, so they took it to the king. When they took it to the king, the king was at that time was apparently in his summer hut or whatever he was, he was sitting by the fireplace. So he could have been winter there, wintering, and he was by the fireplace. Uh, and they told the king what had been said. So the king said, go and bring the scroll, whatever it is on the road, bring it, let me see. So when they brought it and he read a few pages, he got angry. So he took a knife and cut the papers into pieces, cut them, the word of God, cut it into pieces, cut it into pieces and threw it into the fire and burned it. You know, threw it into the fire and burned it. That's how much of a Hung anger that he had against God for God pronouncing his word. They had that anger so much in him that he had to burn it. Well, the message came to Jeremiah that that's what has happened. And immediately the word of God came to Jeremiah again. Take a row, the same row. And God had to speak the same things, you know. And not only that, he added some. Talking about Je Jehoiakim was the king then. And said, because of what Jehoiakim has done, you know, yes, the Chaldeans will come, the Babylonians will come, and they will take him and his family, every one of them, and they will go into captivity. Jeremiah will not mean words. You know, a true prophet doesn't fear the faces of anybody. The true prophet will not seek the favor of anybody. He speaks God's word, the word of truth. So he sent that. And they rewrote the whole word again and brought it. At this time, there was Zedekiah who was there. Joachim is already gone because the prophecy that was given came to pass and Jehoiakim was taken. But then a new king, Zedekiah. No, no. Uh, yeah, the king, Zedekiah. So when it came to him, you know, they. Jeremiah took off. He was going to a place, not actually going to be with the Chaldeans, but the Lord had told him that the Chaldeans will come. Because when the Chaldeans heard that the Egyptians had come, they dissembled and they scattered. So the Lord says, this Chaldeans will come back. That is, the Babylonians will come back. And sure enough, they, came, they did come back. But before they came back, when Jeremiah attempted to go to the border somewhere because of, uh, I don't know the reason why he wanted to go, but he was not trying to run away from the Chaldeans. So when the word came to some of the people that uh, there was a lie that came from some of the false teachers, false prophets, false crabs, those who didn't like what they were hearing Jeremiah saying, they said Jeremiah was running away and was going to the camp of the Chaldeans. And so they came and told these guys, and the guys went and arrested Jeremiah and brought him to the king and told the king that, look, this is what Jeremiah is doing. He's weakening the hands of the people. He doesn't love our country. Have you heard that before? The people who speak the truth, who preach the truth, who counsel against things that leaders are going to do, which is inimical or not according to God's will. They are the ones who are branded anti anti nationals you know we heard that during the first iraq war the people who opposed it we said hey these people they don't like the country you know and we all have seen the aftermath of that that we found that it was all based on lies 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 but what have we done no we are so much interested in the oil money in all those blood money that we have and some will say well if it's our ministers the first war, he said, I finished praying with this prominent minister. And so we have started a war. And I called that prominent minister's office and I, a prophet, I mean, evangelist. And I said, so if you are saying this, that you should go and destroy these people, if God asks you to go and pray and preach to them, which God are you going to preach to them? Do you think they will hear you? Well, one of his assistants said, no, he didn't say that. That's what, what he said to us. I said, look, the harm has already been done. The harm has already been done because we have people who claim to be prophets, but they don't know the Lord. They don't. They claim to be 
pastors, preachers, evangelists, whatever they are, they've, they've never spent time fasting, true fasting. I'm not talking about when you are eating bread and you say you are, you are fasting because you are not eating other things, eating bread. No, that is not fasting. True fasting is when you turn your tables, place upside down, and go before God with an empty stomach and put it in a seeking God's face. That's what Ezekiel, uh, Jeremiah, prophets, all those ministers of the gospel, the apostles, that's what they did. That's what is called true fasting. Today we, we lie, we say we are fasting. Daniel's fast. A lie, lie, lie. Who tells you that Daniel fast is what? Uh, eating uh, salad and all those things. No, Daniel fast you can find in chapter, Daniel chapter 9 where he fasted three days 21 days no water no food that's fasting jesus christ fasted 40 days no food no water moses 40 days no if i 80 days no food no water that is true fasting let's stop lying when we love food so much we want to eat by the second cockroaches we are no match cockroaches are no match to us we just love to eat around the clock with distended bellies and we call ourselves prophets and we only speak out of our stomach our bellies beloved let's stop that is what we have today so we have just shaded and you know uh, you know what do you call it twisted up we twist the word of god because we love money and we love food that is not jeremiah jeremiah was willing to die so when these people uh, took jeremiah they went and told the king that Jeremiah doesn't like the country. He's weakening the hands of the soldiers, the military, by saying what he's saying, that we are going to go into captivity and that the, the, the Babylonians are going to defeat us and all that. Now, don't equate nationalism with Christianity. You know, we can't equate nas being nationalistic to the fear of God. It doesn't. If that be the case, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah wouldn't have been destroyed because they love their country, they love their way of sin. Babylonians wouldn't have, let's see, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah wouldn't have been destroyed. The people in the days of Noah wouldn't have been destroyed because they were all nationalistic and they loved their evil ways. So being nationalistic doesn't make you a Christian. Okay? Being nationalistic doesn't make you a Christian. It doesn't in no way make you a Christian. But having God, fearing God, and being heavenly minded, and doing that which is righteous, is what uh, is, is required of you and I. And Jeremiah was heavenly minded. Please, I, I, my time is not that much, but I want to encourage you to read the entire Jeremiah, book of Jeremiah. And on this subject, 36, 37, 38, read it, and you see what happened. So Jeremiah was taken, they went to tell the king, that Jeremiah needs to be killed, he needs to die because what he's saying is not in favor of the country. Wow, can you imagine that he was not nationalistic enough? He was not condoning the things that we are doing, so he has to die. He has to die, that's what he said. That's the same thing that we have done. We have done prophets, lying prophets, seeing, watching because they love money. We have encouraged violence. We have encouraged things that have led to the destruction of nations. And today, you see what we've done. You know, because the true prophets, the true men of God, the people who fear God, you know, will not be heard. And the people of God will not say what God says they should say. Jeremiah said what God said they should say. And because of that, he was now taken and thrown into a dungeon a dungeon full of quagmire, stinking place. They threw him in. The reward of being true, a prophet. He was thrown into that because he didn't want to hear him. Beloved, that is a true prophet. He's willing to risk his life, to tell the truth, the truth, the truth, the word of God. So thankfully, there was a man by name Abedmelech, an Ethiopian, who saw what had been done went and told the king, king, look, that what we have, the people have done is not right. This man is innocent and he's going to die. So the king ordered him to be removed. So because of bad Melech, he was taken out of the place and put in the courts of the prison. And the king ordered that he should be taken care of. But then the king sent, asked Jeremiah, 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 so, What's the word of God from, okay, am I going to leave? Jeremiah said, yeah, king, if I told you the truth, you'll kill me. 
But Jeremiah, the king said, oh, no, I won't, I, I won't kill you. Just tell me. He said, well, king, it's best for you to surrender. Surrender to the men of the king of Babylon. Surrender to them. Surrender to them. If you do that, then you spare the, our nation from being bent down and the people will be spared. Do that. Well, as if the king will do that. The king didn't do it. Twice did the king had inquired. And Jeremiah said the same thing. He didn't change a word. He said, yes, we are going to be conquered. The people are going to defeat us. But surrender. A true prophet. How many of us today, how many of us with bloated bellies, how many of us with all those long garments parading the streets as apostles, as prophets, are willing to speak the word of truth. You know, we are so much interested in speaking soothing words into the ears of people just because of our ad advantage. We are so full of craft, lying to the flock, people of God, and leading many into hell. My beloved, one day, we're going to give account. If you look at what Jeremiah did and look, compare it with what the apostles did in the New Testament, there's no difference because every one of those apostles spoke the word of God spoke the word of God, spoke the word of God. That is why some of them were beheaded because they will never compromise the word of God. They will never say anything just so that they will get money. They were not people who were focused on the pockets of the people as it is today. Saying things that people want to hear, sow seed, this, this, give me this, give me that. If you look at what Paul, when he was raising money, it was not for him. He takes the money, goes to Jerusalem, give it to the people over there, the poor people, the downtrodden. That's what they did. None of them kept anything to themselves. None of them was flying in private jet planes or perhaps if camels were the Cadillacs, then none of them. Paul walked. They did lived simple lives. The what was occupying them was the word of God, the word of truth. And they had worked heaven as their focus. They never told any lies. They never prophesied any lies. They never say anything that to just to get the advantage of the masses of the people. Today we have so many who have surrounded presidents, have surrounded kings, surrounded this thing, who call themselves prophets. And they are telling them lies just because of what they can gain from them. Beloved, watch it. Jesus Christ said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? You can continue to do that and have the favor of people, have the favor of kings, have a favor of presidents who are dishing out monies into you and you are doing, you have even sold the congregation of God. On the days of election, you sold them and you tell them vote for this person, vote for this person. So they come to you, politicians come to you so that you can get, yeah, we've sold the members just so that we'll get money. Watch it. One day, those, that money cannot save you. For Jeremiah, he knew his God. And because of that, he was thrown into that dungeon for preaching the truth, for saying, prophesying the truth of God. But the Lord stood by Jeremiah. Now, what happened in chapter 39, it's very interesting. When Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's army came, when they came in there, you know, as if they knew Jeremiah. But they've not known this man for anywhere. But because God knows his own, the Bible says the Lord is good. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 7. Nehemiah is the book of Nahum. Nahum chapter 1 verse 7. It says the Lord is good, a strong good in the time of trouble. He knows those who trust in him. Jeremiah trusted in the Lord, spoke the word of God. So on the day when the uh, Babylonians came into town, and they broke into the garrisons and came. When they came, Zedekiah was running away. He was supposed to surrender to them before, but he, was, he, took, he thought he would run out, he, would, he would can outwit God. What God has said will have come to pass. But when he was running away, the Chaldeans arrested him, took him. They took him. And what did they do? They took him with his family. Everywhere. Everything that Jeremiah said was came to pass. He watched with his own eyes his children being killed, his family being slaughtered. And then after, afterwards, his eyes were gouged out. Can you imagine that? Because he was a stubborn king. He would not listen to the word of God. He, was, he thought he would outwit God, but he can't. My friend, 
you can say all the nice political words and the Buddhist uh, politicians and power brokers and everyone. You can so, say whatever you want just to get the votes of people. But one day, if you and I don't repent and accept God for who he is and tremble at the word of God and repent from our wicked ways, repent from all the things that we've been doing. Listen, all the money, the Bible tells us in the book of James, James talks about, read James chapter 1 and see what the word of God says there. You know, it talks about no matter how much money, you can get the money that will fill up to the heavens and gloat in them. One day, like a grass with us, you also pass away and leave it all behind. But there's one place that you and I will go to face the judgment seat of Christ. And woe be unto you if you died in your sin, if you died in your wickedness. Hell is where you and I will go if that's what we if we died in our sins. So it behoves you and I to repent today, turn away from our wicked ways, surrender to God through Jesus Christ. Let's continue. Jeremiah. So now Jeremiah, uh, the king of King Zedekiah, has been brought into Babylon. His eyes gouged out, all because of his stubbornness and his rebellion. Okay, but then before even that could happen, the word of God came to Jeremiah and the message was sent to Abed-Melech. Because Abed-Melech, when he heard that the Babylonians had come, was afraid. But the word of God went to him and told him, look, my friend, you, because of the love, the trust that you have for God, they will not touch you. You are okay, so don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. My beloved, if you take the side of God, if you stand firm, the Bible says that those who trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that can never be moved. If you trust in the Lord, if you spoke the word of truth, if you spoke, my beloved, this is the day and time when we don't have to, you know, waste our time listening to fake and false prophets who tell you and I, oh, something great is coming. Oh, you are going to be doing, doing what? God is, that's not a prophecy that the Lord is giving today. No, not with the sins. Our sins that we are committing today is greater than the ones that the people in Judah did. So how do you expect, how do you expect God to alter his word, you know, to speak to us, you know, sweet words, when in the days of Judah, he didn't do that. Jesus Christ tells us that there are false prophets who arise in this our day and time, and certainly they are already around. They are bound, pillow and belly prophets who only tell people what they want to hear to just to gain their advantage. No, my beloved, God has not changed. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. The word of God is quick and powerful. It is like fire, it burns. It's like a two-edged sword, it cuts in between. It's like a hammer, it breaks. And that is the word that God wants you and I to hear. It tells uh, Timothy in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, chapter uh, for Second Timothy says, "Quick, it's a preach the word of God in season and out of every season." Amen. 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 God bless you. He said, "Preach the word of God. Preach the word of God. Preach, rebuke, and that is where we are now. Not soothing, not words that will appeal to the whims of the people, so they will be sending you money, so you can have all those kind of expensive cars and everything riding in it, and say that you have been blessed. It's not a blessing of God. That is stolen." goods and one day you and i will give account to god for hiding the truth and for lying to the people and to making them feel good in their sins and turning them away from god jeremiah was the one who always directed the people to the living god and god is looking for men and women like you and you and i to turn away from our wicked ways and direct the people's heart and mind to the living God, to the cross, the cross, the cross, and to Jesus Christ who was crucified for you and I. Are you willing to join that army of God who spoke the word of truth? Yes, God gives, God gives prophecies today. But I'm more very, very leery at those who walk around calling themselves prophets, wearing that as a title, prophets and prophetess. No, no, no. I'm very, very leery of those people. The moment they begin to identify and say, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet, watch out. Watch out. 
Watch out. The prophet who prophesies, if it doesn't come to pass, stone him to death. They are always using uh, guessworks, try and error. Hey, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Who tells you that if God is good to say, I see, I see, I see, I see. God speaks. He doesn't say, I see, I see, I see. I hear, I hear, I hear, I hear, I hear. Trying, or oh, using all trying. Uh, no, no, God doesn't do that. Please, let's stop making a mockery of God. The God, the living God speaks. He speaks so clearly. He speaks. He does not use try and error method. And when he speaks, it comes to pass. Okay? Beloved, that is the word of God today. You've seen. Read the entire chapters I've given to you of the book of Jeremiah 36, 37, 38, 39. And I'll be coming back again, continuing this message on false prophets, stubborn kings, stubborn leaders, lying counselors. I'll bring it all. Okay? Listen, God bless you. I love you, so I'll tell you the truth. And but there's one who loves you the most. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the Son of God by whom God speaks to us today. And if God gives you a message, a word of prophecy, it must line up with the word of God. It must line up with the word of God. Remember in the New Testament, there was a man by name Agabus. He prophesied. He spoke within the word of God, talking about what was going to happen to Jeremiah, who was going hey, to Paul. He said, the man whose girdle is this, is going to suffer this thing. This is, it lines with God's word. Because he stood for God. Because Paul stood for God, like Jeremiah, he was going to be persecuted. It is God's word. The same with the daughters of uh, Philip. They, they were prophetess. They, they had the gift of prophecy. God used them and they prophesied truth. Okay? Listen, let's make sure that Jesus Christ is our all in all in these last days. The days are coming when some of us will run and go and tell mountains to hide us from the face of God and the mountains wouldn't because they themselves will say they are afraid of God. Okay? May it be that you and I will turn our whole heart unto God through Jesus Christ in these last days. God bless you. Grace and peace. Bye-bye.